Hi everybody, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad you're with us as we gather for worship around the Word of God. Today we're in the Lord's Prayer. We're going to be taking a look at the petition that says, um, Give us this day our daily bread. And as the sun rises, we are reminded that every day is, is a new day of grace in Christ. That God is our Father in Heaven who cares about us and watches over our lives. And a part of his care and watchfulness for us is that he provides for us everything we need to support our body and life. The phrase for that in the Lord's Prayer is daily bread. And so today we're going to take a look at daily bread and we're going to remember that um, the Father in heaven is generous and kind and loving to us. In a way you can say, Today is like a mini Thanksgiving day as we remember that God gives us our daily bread. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. Hello everybody, welcome to worship today. Glad that you're here as we gather around the Word of God. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, and for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today comes from the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 10 through 17. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful so that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I'm giving to you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land, with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness and something your ancestors had not even known to humble and test you so then that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors, as it is today. Our second scripture lesson is from the New Testament, the book of First Timothy, chapter 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and have pierced themselves with many pains. And our gospel lesson today is from Luke chapter 17, beginning at the 11th verse. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were healed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of our God. We continue now to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Yeah.
fails me never Good shepherd may I sing your praise Within your house I'm sure you've heard this verse before. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. It comes from Matthew chapter 6. It's a familiar verse. A lot of people memorize it. It's pretty um, short and easy. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. It certainly teaches us the first commandment that we are to remember the Lord our God, to have no other gods before him. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches this to us as well. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus seeks, uh, teaches us to seek ye first the kingdom of God by the structure of the prayer and the way that it's laid out. In the Lord's Prayer, we begin as we speak to our Father in heaven because we have authorized and unlimited access to him through his son, Jesus Christ. And as we speak to our Father in heaven, the first three things that we talk about are his name, his kingdom, and his will. We pray that these things are honored on earth and in our lives, just as they are in heaven. God's name. God's kingdom, God's will are the first three things that we pray about in the Lord's Prayer. By the structure and the format, the layout of the prayer, Jesus is teaching us in the Lord's Prayer to seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then after that, we pray for our needs. In the Lord's Prayer, then, Jesus teaches us that we can, we pray for daily bread, that we pray for the forgiveness of sins, that we pray for help in the midst of temptations, and we pray that God would deliver us from the evil one and all of his assaults. Today, as we continue our series on the Lord's Prayer, we want to focus in on daily bread. That phrase, daily bread, is just simply a way to summarize all the needs that we have. It's everything that the Father in heaven gives to us because he loves us. It reflects God the Creator's love and care and generosity for all of his creation. As it says in the Catechism that God gives daily bread to everyone. But in the Lord's Prayer, we recognize that it comes from our Father in heaven. Here's how Luther would teach it to us in the small catechism. What is the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. And what does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all the evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. And then he goes on to, to help us understand what that phrase daily bread means. What is meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as Food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, 
good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. Daily bread is, is a phrase that summarizes all of our needs as we live here on earth. And when we as God's people pray to our Father in heaven for daily bread, we are acknowledging that everything we have and everything we are is a gift from God's good hand. There is a deep humility in recognizing that. There is a humility in even confessing that publicly. It is a statement of faith in the love, care, kindness, and generosity of our Father in heaven. In faith, we recognize that our daily bread comes from our Father in heaven, and it's by grace. It's a gift. It's because he loves us. Everything you are, everything you have, is God's personal gift to you. So think about your life. The Lord has allowed you to be born at this time in this country, and he has given you all the blessings that you have. It's all by grace. It's all a gift from your creator, but more specifically, from your father in heaven who loves you. Your physical blessings are immense and they abound. With minimal effort, you have food, water, clothing, shoes, health care, education, transportation, communication, entertainment, recreation. The list could go on and on and on. With minimal effort, all of those things are at your fingertips. That is unprecedented in the history of the world. And even in most countries, even today. God has been extremely generous with you. Everything you are and everything you have is a gift from God's good hand. That's what we confess when we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. It's a humble acknowledgement that God has given us everything. Of course, there is a danger that comes with having so many things at our fingertips. And that danger is pride. You start to think that you deserve these things. You start to think that you have all these things because of you and your self-sufficiency. You may even boast to yourself in your thoughts. You may even boast to others out loud about how hard you work or how gifted you are or how intelligent you are. Um, you boasting in yourself and your effort. You know, the Lord warns us about that danger. We heard it in our Old Testament lesson today. Here's what the Lord said through Moses to the Israelites. When you settle down and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God. You may even say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands 
have produced this wealth for me. That's a danger. That is pride. If there was a danger of pride with the Israelites, they were eating manna and living in a barren wilderness in tents. Can you imagine the danger of pride for us now who live in the most prosperous country in the history of the world? Be careful of pride. Evaluate your heart. Think about your attitude and how you think about your possessions and your status in life. If you find pride, repent. Renounce it and turn away from it. Stop being self-sufficient, thinking like that, and, and boasting in your own self, in the power and strength of my own hands, as it says in Deuteronomy. Confess it to God. Rely on his grace and mercy to forgive you. Everything we are, everything we have, it's a gift from God's good hand. And in the Lord's Prayer, when we pray and also confess that God is the one who gives us our daily bread. In the Lord's Prayer, we publicly confess that we are dependent on the Lord one day at a time whenever we ask the Lord for daily bread. When you think about God's blessings, remember they're not just physical. They're the easy ones to see. But the most important ones are spiritual. The same Father in heaven who has blessed you with all of your physical blessings showers you with even greater spiritual blessings. Through the work of his Son, the Father in heaven forgives your sins, even your sins of pride and self-sufficiency and boasting. God the Father sent his son Jesus to do the work of salvation for you. Through his life and death and resurrection, you have forgiveness of sins. You have peace with God. You have hope of eternal life. And you have new eternal life right now. It's all because of Jesus. Because of his life, death, and resurrection. God has blessed you not just with physical blessings, but with every spiritual blessing as well through his son, Jesus Christ. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us to know and to believe and to confess that everything we have and everything we are is a gift from God's good hand both physically and spiritually. And because we have that realization through faith, we respond in at least two different ways. First, and probably foremost, we give thanks to God. We praise him for his generosity. Today in the gospel lesson, we heard the story of 10 lepers who all were cleansed, all received the gift of healing. All 10 lepers were healed, but only one returned to thank and praise Jesus. The significant thing that I want to highlight for you today is that Jesus noticed Jesus noticed the neglect of the nine who never said thanks. Jesus noticed the gratitude and the thankfulness of the one who did return to thank and praise him. Jesus noticed both neglect and thankfulness. 
Be the one that thanks the Lord for your daily bread. In faith, every single day is Thanksgiving Day to the Lord our God. A second thing in thankfulness for daily bread and the realization that it comes from our generous heavenly father, it helps us and drives us and shapes us and molds us to be generous people as well. Generosity marks the life of a baptized disciple. When you realize how generous the Father in heaven is in giving you everything you need to support your body and life, then it motivates you to share with others. That's why, for instance, we, we give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. It's a reflection of his generosity to us. That's why we go out and we help other people. And we're generous with our money and our possessions and our talents, our time, our skills, our knowledge. Because God has been generous and abundant with us in giving us daily bread. God's generous daily bread teaches you and drives you to be a generous person as well. Because our Father in heaven has given us our daily bread, we respond with thankfulness and with generosity. In the Lord's Prayer, we seek first the kingdom of God when we pray to our Father in heaven. The first things that we talk about are his name, his kingdom, and his will. We want them honored in in earth and in our lives, just as they are in heaven. And then we turn to our needs. And one of those needs is daily bread. And Jesus has taught us through this prayer, through his teaching, to know, believe, and confess that God generously gives us his day, our daily bread. Everything we need to support this body and life. Amen. We pray. God the Father, you are kind and generous to all the peoples of the earth. We thank you that you have given us faith to know and eyes to see that all good things come from your gracious hands. We praise you not only for our physical blessings, but also for our spiritual blessings in your son, Jesus. Help us to trust in you one day at a time and to rejoice that everything we are and everything we have is a gift from your good hands. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We join together now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next week in worship.